Hi, my name is Mark Metternich, and this is Focus Stacking Made Easy. But before we get into that, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about myself. I am a professional, full-time landscape photographer, and I do a variety of things to make my living. As far as this Focus Stacking Made Easy, very, very simple. What I do is I put it in a live view, and I walk around, generally speaking, at F22, higher ISO, and focused pretty much really close to the lens, like way, way back from infinity. And I just basically walk around. I've spent about two hours here just walking around, walking around with my camera, holding my camera, not looking through the camera, but really getting my camera in a lot of places I wouldn't put my face or my head to find interesting foregrounds. You never know what things are gonna look like through the camera until you put your camera there. And because I'm about one foot from my camera, I get upwards to six inches. I'm probably going to have six or eight or ten shots bracketed. Getting closer. And the next one's going to be infinity. Right on infinity. Now this one has an adapter so the infinity is not correct. But I've practiced it and I know exactly where infinity is. So once I hit infinity, we're done. We got the whole deal. This would be the first image here after the hand shots. And you can tell there's an average exposure, a dark exposure, and a bright exposure because my tendency is to bracket for insurance purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and look through here. The whole series, these all look the same. They all look the same. And actually, I changed composition right here at 6773. So I'm going to go ahead and shift click from 6755 down to 6772. Highlight all those images. And I have not pulled these open for years. So let's just take a look at what I was doing. It's not. Everything's sharp here, so there's your before and your after. And if you look at the stack, Photoshop has taken almost equally from all of the images. So it's taken portions of every one of these images that Photoshop feels is the sharpest. So what we want to do is we want to evaluate it and see if it's made some errors. I hope that it has made some errors because we want to do a little bit of cleanup. So I'm teaching you the cleanup. And basically take my eraser brush. I will usually use a soft brush. I'll use 100% opacity. If you want to use your Wacom pad, you can. Size my brush and then I would race in the area that best represents that spot. Very simple. You're never going to get absolute perfection, but that's basically what you end up doing to clean up these spots. And then you're getting the absolute most out of this. And when you size it up to a 40 inch print, a 50 inch print, 70 inch print, and you know the very best protocol for sharpening and maybe some grain simulation to create the perfect illusion of more detail in your image if done correctly, you're going to be able to maximize these things in terms of their size and the potential quality detail in them. 